With spring football officially back for the University of Utah, we have the opportunity to hear from Kyle Whittingham, Cam Rising, and more. And we're breaking down all of their comments on today's Locked On Utes. You are Locked On Utes, your daily podcast on the Utah Utes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team, every day. Hello, everyone, and thank you for making Locked On Utes your first listen every single day. We are available on all platforms, including YouTube and wherever you may get your podcasts. If this is your first time listening to our show, make sure you like and subscribe. Love interacting with all of you in the YouTube comments, as well as on social media, where you can follow our show at Locked On Utes today. Today's episode of Locked On Utes is brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Check them all out today at NissanUSA.com. My name is JT Wister, so former intern inside the University of Utah Athletic Department. Excited to be joined on today's show by Nathan Carter of KSL Sports and analysts out there. And Nathan, when you're talking about spring ball being back, one thing that is so great is we get the opportunity to hear from Kyle Winningham, all of the players as well. And let's start with the head honcho himself, starting with Kyle Winningham and what he brings to this Utah football team. Always some interesting quotes, that being uh, the first thing. All these quotes are going to come to us from the Utah Athletics website. And the first thing that was kind of noticeable there was he just talked about, you know, what kind of goes into the early practices of spring ball. Said there was a lot of install early on and that they go pretty rapid with the install and everything gets put in as quickly as they can. So you get the young guys up to speed. You make sure the older guys are in sync with everything there. And then you can just get reps and more of experience. And this is what spring is really about to me, right? Getting comfortable, knowing everything everything inside and out so especially come not just refining technique but the playbook especially to getting familiar with it because once you get fall camp you're going at it it's physical it's a grind that's where you just want to know things so inside and out so well that starts now so by the time the season hits when you're tired and exhausted you're still going and you're still all right and you can still recall everything you need yeah for sure we was talking about that luckily he has a decent chunk of vets on the roster that can go to the tempo that he wants to keep up with everybody and be able to get them to the point with installing everything they need to at this point in the season uh, and just kind of bring out that culture that he drives so hard within the team. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up the culture because that's something that is uh, it's definitely going to be brought up set, is brought up even by some of the players, and we just know what a vital part that is for the um the, the Utah quarterbacks, the Utah team in general. I said Utah quarterbacks because I was getting a little ahead of myself. The next interesting quote I thought he shared was talking about how, you know, the young quarterbacks are coming along. Well, because because Cam Rising, we know he's the guy. But I did think it was interesting that he did open up and say, hey, Isaac Wilson, Luke Patari, and Brandon Rose, they're all going to get those number two quarterback reps and have an opportunity to battle things out. Now, I, I think by the time this comes around, I think Batari will more than likely end up settling and be the fourth guy on the depth chart, but it is a contrast of experience, right? You want to talk about someone who knows Utah's playbook inside and out? That's Batari. But Wilson has all of the talent in the world, so I expect him by the time, even with the limited knowledge he'll have by the time the season rolls around, I expect him to be two or three. But I, this is what I love about Utah. You could highlight this with several positions, especially we can even talk about the offensive line coming up, right? Utah, it's an open competition, and I absolutely love that for all these positions, right? Yes, Cam Rising as accomplished as he is, and we just know he's the best guy. Like, that's not going to happen. But when you transfer in and all these things like that, like, you have to go in and earn it. It's what makes the defensive back Battle so fascinating, the offensive line battle, as I already highlighted, and even the backup quarterback job. It's something that's going to be so fun to watch, and I just love that at Utah that things aren't promised. You have to come up here and earn it. Yeah, for sure. Witt's careful with his words. He knows Harry. He knows what headlines are, are cooking up the second he says something. And so, yeah, he was very stern on saying Cam's back. He won two Pac-10 championships. He's ready to be under center again. And then – the next man up is is a battle. It's going to be a chance for anybody to step up and take it. And so love to see the competition early and love to see guys get to play football. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what the spring ball is all about. We don't get, you know, you get to view some of the practices, but don't get an opportunity to see these guys till the spring game. And one guy that I think everyone's already a little excited to see for the spring game is a guy in Mike Mitchell. He's a guy I want to really focus on in tomorrow's show too. But it is exciting that the young running backs are coming along, right? That's something Kyle Whittingham 
highlighted too in his press conference. He mentioned that John Randall Jr. was out there doing some really good things. Also talked about how Jalen Glover showed positive signs. And we already know from last year the type of just dynamic athleticism and especially just the vertical speed and threat that a Dijon Stanley can find lining them up all over the field. You know, coming into spring ball, I was really talking about Anthony Woods, Jalen Glover, Mikai Bernard. It does seem like these really talented freshman backs from last year are going to have an opportunity to earn some playing time this year because I really didn't even think about this during the whole transfer cycle, but Utah brought in a bunch of backs. None of those guys transferred. They had the opportunity to. So it kind of goes back to what I talked about a little bit ago, Nathan. All these guys have the opportunity to earn playing time and clearly – all of them have already been doing positive things that they might just have a shot at taking some quality reps from the more established guys. Yeah, we see players bought in, still working hard, trying to make up for those those handoffs and those carries that got away from the team in the transfer portal. So there is yep. opportunities for the veteran Mike Mike Bernard to step right up. And But yeah, Mike Mitchell, I think, is nipping at his heels. And then Witt even called out, Dijon Stanley is just being a blur on the field. He's just fast enough that the offense needs to find a way to to utilize that. Yeah, there was something we saw them play with a little bit last year in his redshirt season, and I expect, especially with like the loss of Sione Vaki, that he'll be a bigger part of the offense this coming season, something to definitely keep an eye on. And, you know, Winningham also talked about the state of the offensive line, and I, you can elaborate that on more in a second. But the other thing I thought was really interesting was just him talking about the wide receivers, right? You know, talking about what you see from guys like a Dorian Singer, or David Washington, and a Tayshawn Lyons, right? He said that those guys look good so far. And, I mean, Dorian, as we're going to talk about some of the quotes that Cam Rising and Dorian Singer had in the, in the second segment, but that's a guy that just looked really good and is obviously one of the guys who has the most experience, so he's going to be that experience giving him more of an advantage than on those other guys who don't have as much of it. But it's encouraging to hear guys like Washington and Lions. You can already just see the talent on display. Just everything's not in place there yet in terms of knowing the playbook and maybe some of the finer thing aspects of route running or just things that grow with time at the college level. So those are all things that matter big for the wide receivers. And I'm very interested to see how that kind of all gets smoothed out. But I love that Wit said what he said about the state of the receivers here too. It just seems like this room is more talented than it's been in years past. That being the wide receivers, which really excites me personally. And I know Nathan, you were one of the things that really excited you listening to coach Witt's press conference is just hearing him talking about, or his media availability is hearing him talk about the offensive line and the condition it's in already. Yeah. Like compared to Cam's number one, and it's a battle for number two, he laid out the, his current starters on the offensive line move Spencer Fano over to right tackle, which could be a great fit for him um, after playing left tackle pretty well for most of the season last year. Yep, he's but, pretty good. Yeah, bumping up Caleb Lemu into that left, left tackle position. He was excited that Coley's back at center and able to fill in the guards at uh, Tano and Michael. So it's a, it's exciting to see let that group kind of come together and see how see how much they can do this season. Yeah, it's a really exciting group. And I think that already seeing a guy like Lomu in at left tackle, he's a guy I thought would have a chance to maybe break his way in. But to see the first days of spring ball, he's already in that spot, I think is really awesome. Because last year, you're right. We didn't know it was going to be – Fano didn't really – earn his spot up there, understandably, till fall camp because you just needed that much time to learn the playbook and add the strength and all of the things like that that you do as a true freshman and rolling that quickly. We'll see if Garcia can make a similar leap like that come the fall. Uh, you get guys like Falcon Calmatule last year were like the mainstay and the focus of things, and you know he he's not in that position right now currently where he is one of the starting left tackles. So lots of names still to monitor here. Uh, Jaron Comps, another guy we haven't heard about. So I'm really interested and excited to see what the state of this offensive line does end up look like coming the spring game, what that five out there is, and especially once we're looking towards fall camp too. Did you have something else you wanted to add? Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, sorry. It was, it was exciting to hear him say he expects nine to ten guys to be ready to play in the trench again this season. Obviously, last season had its struggles with injuries, but mm -hmm. they were able to go deep, and he's he's prepared if worse comes to worse. That, yeah, he said he could have nine to ten guys ready to play. Yeah, the center position especially, right? It was supposed to be Maia, and then it was Jaron Kump, and then they moved Coley in there, and the offensive line was better from that point on. So lots of just 
different combinations, which is never ideal for a group that res relies so hev heavily on chemistry and their communication. And hopefully it's not an issue for Utah this coming season. So always great to hear from Coach Whittingham. But we also got to hear from Cam Rising. It's been a long time since we've been able to do that. Great to hear from Cam, Dorian Singer, Mackay Bernard. All those guys spoke to the media as well. And we're going to be diving into their comments in one moment. But first, I want to talk to you all about one of the sponsors of today's episode of Locked on Utes, our friends at Nissan. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlights is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one of the teams that stands out, and that's pushed it further than the rest. Just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. This week, we're talking about the Houston Cougars, who can only be described as the Armada. The top-seeded team is, a hard, is as hardcore as it gets out there. So it's no wonder that they're expected to land as one of the top seeds in the tournament after their first season in the Big 12 and how exceptional they were able to play. And unfortunately, they're going to be a thorn in Utah's side they have to deal with for a long time when it comes to Big 12 basketball next year and years after. But make sure you guys take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. You can go over now and shop at NissanUSA.com. also want to talk to all of you about another sponsor of our episode of Locked On Utes today, our friends at UCCU. Here's some exciting news. UCCU has just elevated their checking accounts by enhancing them with more benefits, more savings, and more online protections than ever before. A lot more paired with the most advanced and comprehensive mobile banking tools. Elevated checking is a must-have financial product packed with lifestyle security and financial benefits. The lifestyle benefits alone include cell phone protection, roadside assistance, telehealth with 24-7 access to licensed health professionals with zero copay and exclusive savings on travel, shopping, and dining. And elevated checking is free when you do any one of the following. Use your debit or credit card 15 times or more a month or make a monthly direct deposit of 500 or more and maintain an average daily balance of 1000 500. Otherwise, UCCU Elevated Checking is only $6 a month. Visit uccu.com to open an elevated checking account online or stop by any branch to open an account. UCCU, love where you bank. Nathan, looking at the player quotes, it was so great to have Cam Rising back. And I thought he said several things that I found very interesting. Number one, he did just talk about how surreal it is to be back. This is a guy who's overcome a lot. The injury, as he highlighted on ESPN 700's The Bill Riley Show, later uh, later on in last season was even worse than we thought it was so to spend all that time the constant battle i remember watching him warm up against ucla thinking that oh he's almost there and then it didn't work out if you think back to that january rose bowl that was a long time ago and for him to be back and as he said feels close to 100 percent i got to imagine that's a great feeling for him and obviously all the utah fans share in that excitement of just how glad they are to have cam back and not just back but back on the field too yeah, for sure. Definitely seemed excited to be back. Another spring tra training, spring practice for Cam. He's out there working out with the guys, trying to get everybody up to the same speed, making sure everybody's on the same page. But I did think it was interesting that he said something along the lines of, he doesn't quite remember what 100% feels like, but he's yeah. feeling pretty good right now. Yes, I thought that was a great point he said. And yeah, I think he's getting, yeah, definitely getting close to whatever that'll be like. And obviously if he's doing everything at spring, we heard, we heard he was running around, saw some of the videos and clips of that too. So definitely almost there, which is uh, is really exciting too. Um, another thing I thought was interesting he talked about was he just talked about how sitting out allowed him to have a better perspective of football from a play thought calling and methodical approach. His answer about it being methodical, what I thought was very interesting because that's what his game has always been. I mean, like if you're look, thinking about explosive pass plays in Cam Rising's career, uh, the flea flicker, of course, against USC that one time. Uh, Thomas Yasmin, the big play there, but that was a lot of Yasmin yards after the catch. Same thing with Money Parks uh, against USC the second time. I guess his the first game against USC had that big one to Parks over the middle of the field, but it's not like this Utah offense was ever crazy explosive. But I do understand just like I think there is a lot of pressure on let's make the big play, like let's do something here just for any offense. You want to do that, have the highlight. You don't want to miss out on an opportunity to strike in the end zone, but – What's more important is getting the first down, staying alive, slowly but surely, working your way down the field. Something I feel like Cam already did a good job of, but I thought it was interesting. He just talked about having that better perspective of things from a play-calling standpoint, too. And even Dorian Singer highlighted how exceptional his understanding of the playbook already is. Yeah, for sure. Dorian Singer's talented kid, put up a 1,000-yard season um, in Arizona, went to go play with the Heisman quarterback and didn't quite live up to his probably his personal expectations at USC, but now gets to step on the field up at Rice Eccles and gets to play for the Utes. Definitely a chip on his shoulder. 
says he's excited to try to spend a bunch of time with Cam and get on the same page. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, we will see. It'll be interesting to see how their connection grows, and I feel like it's already in a in a good spot, too. And he actually mentioned Dorian as one of the early standouts. Dorian said him and Cam had been thrown for like a month and a half now, too, which I think is really exciting that those guys have already been able to get together and work together to, um, to continue to talk about some of the things that Cam I said that were really interesting. He talked about that one of the reasons he came back because there was meat left on the bone. And he mentioned he mentioned a championship. I think he was talking about the Big 12 championship. Maybe he was talking about the national championship, which, I, I mean, I absolutely love that. Why not shoot for the moon, right? I remember being in uh, high school football meetings myself when our coach was like, what is our ultimate goal to win state? And we're like, yeah, coach. In the back of my head, I'm like, there's no way we're going to win state. But it's always fun to imagine, like, hey, you know, you're only going to – you're only going to go as far as your dreams take you, right? So it's like, hey, why not believe in that aspect too? And Utah's got a better shot of winning the college football playoff than I did a state championship. But obviously still going to be hard with some of the super teams that are built and kind of out there in college football as is. But I did think what was interesting was he mentioned coming back to get into the playoffs. That is a really strong goal. And I feel like the num- like the most realistic goal for Utah, right, is to win the college – win a conference championship – and then go to the college football playoff. And that's something that really excites me about this Utah football team is that they have a great opportunity to do that. And just by even doing something they've done in years past, winning their conference, they can do something they've never done before, and that's go to the playoff. Yeah, for sure. They definitely have a great chance at winning the Big 12. A few people have them ahead of Kansas, and some people have them right behind them to to win this division or this conference. And so – yeah, that would be great for Dorian Singer. Dorian Singer to be able to get that exposure again, um, be able to put up numbers. A lot of receptions left last season, either through the portal or onto the next level. So he's definitely going to have an opportunity there. Love hearing that he's already working out with Cam, just, just putting in the work, grinding it out. Yeah, and you mentioned Singer. I love that he talked about wanting to come to Utah for the culture aspect and just talked about how he wants to do whatever the coaches want him to do. And obviously he's a wide receiver, so he also very much like to catch a lot of passes, and that's what Cam Rising is going to give him the opportunity to do. But I like that he did mention being not just a playmaker but a leader for the young guys, right? Like I would love if a David Washington or a Tayshawn Lyons, like two or three years from now, maybe when they're like the best receiver on this team, they mention how like, oh, yeah, it was so great having Dorian here. He taught me about this and, like, put me on this and helped me do that. I've always been a big fan of guys who want to give back to the players under them, not just look at it like, ah, you're coming from my spot. Like, I'm just here for myself and doing that. And I think that's what's great about several – I mean, pretty much everyone on Utah's roster from what we hear is like that, where they want to help the guys out behind them, help mentor them along, and help them grow into better players. And I think that's why you can see right away, Singer seems like he's going to be a great cultural fit to this Utah team, Nathan. Yeah, for sure. And he was questioned about – what's it like practicing against this Utah defense? And he was super excited to be able to go up against the secondary at practice and be able to get better against the best. Yeah, that's what is a great opportunity to do. And, you know, he's playing with one of the best, too, because he was asked about what makes Cam special. And he said it's just his ability to the knowledge of the playbook, right? He can make those checks at the line, and he just walks with confidence because he is Cam Rising. There is, right now, is I think Cam is the only quarterback in at least – power four now college football who is returning to college as a two-time conference champion everyone else no one i don't think anyone can say that as a starter because even mccarthy's off to the nfl now so that's i mean that's an incredible thing that cam has and his knowledge of the playbook and dorian even said it's a pro style offense what utah likes to run so the fact that cam is so knowledgeable in just how to put utah in position with those pre-snap reads and checks and knowing like okay the defense is going to do this so right away i know i can hit him with that i need to get us in this location like even mckay mentioned that right where he's like if I forget a play or something happens, I could be like, Cam, what do I do? And then Cam tells him right away. He's like, okay, cool. Like, that is what having Cam rising back there does. And I think Singer, Makai, everyone is going to benefit so much from his presence. Yeah, for sure. I, I thought it was funny when Micah Bernard pointed that out, that he feels comfortable with Cam in the backfield. They've both been around for a while. Weren't able to play as much at all as much as they wanted to last season. And so he was able to check in with Cam with, all the little nuances of the offense and be able to to pick up, pick back up where they left off. Yeah. This Utah offense is in a good place too. And, you know, one thing I've always interesting, really interesting that uh, Mackay Bernard talked about too, was just talking about how he is a little, he's really driven this year to succeed, right? This is his final year that he's going to be here at Utah and, you know, he missing last year as well. I'm sure he got back for the bowl game, of course, but like this is a great opportunity for him too, to be, the guy on this team and look, there's a lot of young running backs there too, but 
Makai is the most accomplished on this team that comes back for another year. So excited to see the role he has. Excited to see Dorian's role can be in back too. It's a really exciting group that the University of Utah has. And with spring ball back, there's still so much to talk about. We'll be diving into a lot of the new notes and just things that continue to come up from all the spring practices on the Hill on tomorrow's show too. But before we do that, we want to talk close today's episode out talking about a former Ute who got absolutely paid in the NFL ranks. We're going to be diving into that in one moment. But first, want to talk to all of you about another sponsor of our episode of Locked On News today, our friends at Amazon. Fire TV is your destination for sports. From live games to highlights to in-depth analysis, Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV sticks that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to the millions of movies, TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether you're in the opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournaments going on, you want to have Fire TV. Fire TV even recently created a Fire TV channel to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more. You can keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports, which it's March Madness, the NBA, MLB, and so much more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos, so much. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. Also want to discuss with all of you another sponsor of our episode of Locked On News today, eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with ebay motors you're burning rubber not cash with all the parts you need at the prices you want it's easy to turn your car into the mvp and bring home that win keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com eligible items only exclusion supply ebay guaranteed fit only available to u.s customers nathan want to close this one out by talking about someone a former Ute who got the bag in the NFL ranks, that being Jalen Johnson, who originally got the franchise tag, but they worked out a long-term deal. Four years, $76 million, and this is a guy who absolutely burst onto the scene this last year. So incredible to watch him go out there and do his work. He got on the All-Pro. He was a second-teamer, earning the Pro Bowl trip. There was a lot of uncertainty about his contract, but he earned every penny of it. He's been a shutdown corner in the NFL now, and we saw what he did at the University of Utah. Ended up being a second-round pick, part of the reason that Utah had – it's just such a great defense back on that 2019 team. And nothing I love seeing more than a former Ute who worked hard, balled out at the highest stage, shutting down NFL receivers, and now gets rewarded for it in Chicago. Yeah, for sure, JT. It's always fun to see him play for the Utes and now being able to get that contract after the back and forth with the, the franchise tag, finally be able to, to earn that multi-year contract, get a little bit more stability. Mm -hmm and be able to move forward. So definitely happy for him and excited for the kind of the, the representation for Utah. And I mean, Jalen has a chance to be featured in some huge games coming up because he's going to be there for four years. I think the bears are going to draft Caleb Williams. And I think Caleb Williams is going to be pretty spectacular. I think what Utah did to him was incredible and more of a part of Utah's defense than the type of player like, oh, Caleb's this. Like, no, no, no. I think Caleb's tremendous. And I think a lot of the USC issues were more their offensive line than anything else. Obviously, Lincoln Riley's a great coach. But um, unless he's going against Morgan Scali's defense, that's the last time I'll throw shade at USC. But I do think there's going to be tons of opportunities for Jalen to match up with really strong receivers in primetime games for him to continue to kind of bolster his big name and all of the different things that come with playing in those high-level games. Because there's a lot of excitement around Chicago with that top pick. They're probably going to end up trading Justin Fields, as I kind of highlighted there. So I'm excited for Jalen Johnson. I think he's one of the top young up-and-coming corners in the NFL still. I know he got paid like he is one, but it still feels like a lot of fans are still thinking more so about like the Jalen Ramsey's of the world like that. And I think Ramsey's incredible. I'm not even trying to say Johnson's better than him, but I think Jalen Johnson's definitely a top 10 corner, maybe a top five corner, and he's getting paid like one of the best in the NFL. I'm excited for him to continue to show that he's one of the best in the NFL. So it's going to be so much fun to continue to see what he did, he continues to do. And there's a lot of other Utes that just got paid. We'll be talking about that on tomorrow's show, as well as all the spring ball news. But Nathan, thank you again for joining us. Yeah, thank you so much, JT. Excited that we get to see a little bit of football coming back for a minute. 
Oh, it's so nice. I know it's a, it's a little tease and then it goes away. We get the USFL or the UXFL, however they're pronouncing that whole thing. That's kind of merged together. But it is nice just to have it back for a little bit to talk about until the real thing is back come this fall. But Nate, thanks again for joining us. That's going to do it for today's edition of Locked On Youth. We'll be back with you tomorrow talking more things Utah football. We look forward to seeing you then.